Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Game Plan. This game plan is about the Detroit Lions versus the Oakland Raiders. If you're new to the program, basically what I do is, is I, I analyze the, uh, the specific injuries, the, st the statistics, the key gambling statistics. I predict the game plan, and then I also project fantasy football scores for all the key players as well towards the end of the video. Um, now, if uh, before we get rolling here, if you could please spare two seconds of your time for two clicks, a like, and a subscribe. Uh, the more subscriptions we have, once we become, long story short, basically, YouTube has some features that are locked for us. Uh, once we become a YouTube partner, they unlock and we can uh, improve these videos, which are really eager to do. Uh, but let's just get rolling here uh, quickly. Let's look at the injuries. I like to run through these for everybody else. So you, you see on the Oakland side, there's two key ones from my point of view. You have uh, Josh Jacobs, who's questionable. The good news is he played last week, and I'm sure he'll play again. The bad news is he's not 100%. When you have a shoulder injury and you're running back and you're throwing your shoulder into people, uh, you know it becomes a matter of toughness at that point. Jacobs has had a little bit of a, I would say, a slower game last week. Um, was that because of the defense? Was that because of the injury? I'm guessing it's probably a mixture of those two, but that is uh, something to keep track of, obviously. And then Rodney Hudson, obviously, in the running game. I don't love when teams lose their centers. Um, you know, they're basically the calling out the... Uh, the um, the lineman packages, um, you know, the uh, the protection packages for uh, the team as the quarterbacks calling out the plays and all that stuff. I don't love it, and you know, when you when you your talented running back is trying to run up the middle a lot. Look, I, I don't love it. It's not the best thing in the world, but you know, those are the key ones for me. Now for the Lions, um, you know, Carson, the guy who's getting the. Uh, the, the lion's share of the carries, no pun intended there. Um, he uh, He's questionable, but they have Ty Johnson. I like Ty Johnson better anyway. Uh, Darius Slay, questionable at cornerback. Um, that's a big one for me. Um, so you see, you know, Detroit, Oakland, to me, similar. They're banged up similarly. So I don't see an advantage or a disadvantage either side. Really, I just see, you know, kind of a couple of teams that are banged up there. I don't love Hudson being doubtful this game, but, you know, it is what it is. It's, this, it's football, right? You're always going to be injured. Uh, key statistics. So this is a total yardage of the season and how they rank. I like to compare offense versus defense and vice versa. So you can see the uh, passing offense for the Raiders is ranked 15th. The Detroit Lions pass defense is 32nd. No bueno, Detroit. You need to shore that up. Uh, Slay being on the injury report, that doesn't help either. Uh, pass defense for the Raiders, 30th. Pass offense for the Lions, 5th. So you can see if you compare these two passing offenses for defenses, I think we're going to see a lot of throwing this week. Uh, but I wouldn't say either team has an advantage. I guess a slight one would go towards Oakland. Uh, I'm sorry, to, towards Detroit in the passing game. Again, if you just take an accumulation of the ranks, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, it slightly favors the Lions, but I think both teams will have opportunities there. Run offense for the Raiders, 7th. Run defense for the Lions, 26th. Matt Patricia, you're a defensive guy, man. you got to fix this stuff. So, uh, you know, advantage there, I would say, goes to uh, Oakland. And then you look at the run defense versus the run offense. Once again, that goes towards Oakland. So if you average these out, um, I say Detroit probably has a little bit of advantage in the passing game. Uh, the Raiders have more advantage to control the clock and keep things going in the running game. Um, and then also kind of forcing the Lions into uh, third and long situations, which is a good a good place to be for Oakland. So I would give the overall advantage if you're just looking at these statistics to Oakland. Now I'd like to go through what I call the gambler's statistics. Um, if you're unfamiliar, uh, basically what these are, you know, gamblers look at a couple of key things, you know, the professional gamblers. They look at the yards per play, defensive yards per play. They look at third down and fourth down conversion percentage, basically how long can your offense stay on the field. And then they also want to see your red zone percentage, um, so if, you're, if your offense is on the field, are they getting touchdowns or are they getting field goals or nothing? And then lastly, turnover uh, percentage as well. So these are, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that, but these are the primary ones. So I like to show these just to people, um, you know, in my, in my San Francisco versus Arizona video, um, it, it, it had some interesting factors of why you can see why the betting public is a little bit sleepier on the 49ers, even though they continue to be undefeated. But again, let's just look over here at Raiders versus Lions. We have 6.2 yards per play for the Raiders, which is a nice, healthy yards per play. Six yards per play given up by the Lions. So if you take an aggregate, uh, basically an average of these two, you're looking at 6.1 yards per play for Oakland. Now you look at defensive yards per play for Oakland, um, 6.1, not great. Um, you look at the Lions, um, 5.9, um, which is nice, healthy average. So you're looking at an average of about six yards per play. So again, in terms of yards per play, very, very similar. I wouldn't give an advantage to either team here. Third down conversions, offensive and defensive. So Oakland stays on the field 48% of the time, almost 49% of the time. 
on their third downs. Uh, the Lions defense on third downs um, only stop about, well, they give up um, 47.3%. So they stop, I guess, 53% of the time. Um, and then uh, similarly, Oakland versus uh, Detroit. Um, Oakland stops more, or I'm sorry, gives up more than Oakland's able to. So again, advantage, I wouldn't say either one of these teams has a big advantage in terms of third down conversions. And then if you look down and you swing that to fourth down conversions, Oakland, when they're aggressive, they're more likely to stay on the field in the fourth down um, versus Oakland. So slight in terms of these kind of top level statistics, slight advantage in terms of yardage gained and staying on the field towards Oakland but they have a strong running game so I'm you know that's that's something that I, I would have expected red zone percentage um, for um, Detroit and uh, Oakland you can see um, the red zone percentage is about 58 to 61 uh, percent and vice versa so uh, you know again these teams are you know pretty much the inverse of each other in terms of uh, offensive and defensive scoring I uh, and again these are touchdown predictions so again don't really think that there's a really big advantage here you look at the turnover margin though Detroit is getting one full possession more per game um, negative 0.4 versus 0.4 there so you look at the game plan now um, and what I would expect to be so obviously uh, I think Oakland's going to need to run the ball um, against Detroit but they're also going to have um, you know passing options as well I think you use the run game with Josh Jacobs assuming he's healthy enough to take a full load and you ride him and then you just try to hit Terrell Williams over the top if you get in the red zone you use Darren Waller I have him projected to get in the end zone I have Terrell Williams projected to get in the end zone and I actually have Jacobs projected to get in the end zone about one and a half times so I say keep doing that um, I think that the Raiders can stay on the field I don't think they need to steal possessions and what I mean by that is I don't think they need to go for it in risky situations in fourth down. Now, if you're on the 35 yard line and your choice is either you know, it's fourth and one, you could either extend the drive or kick a long field goal attempt or something like that. I'm okay with that. But what I'm saying is like, if it's, you know, fourth and goal from the five yard line, there's no, no need for them to push the envelope there. Even if it's fourth and goal from the two, take the points, live to fight another day. I think this offense will be able to move forward. Um, I say tight end the Lions to death. I think you use both Moreau and Waller to to trickle down the field. Um, you know, running running strong with uh, Jacobs. You could even use guys like uh, Richard or Washington or whoever out of the backfield as well. Uh, but I think this this passing attack will be there. Terrell Williams will have probably two opportunities deep in this game. I think he'll get one of them. Um, but uh, I like that. And like I said before, sprinkle in the pass catching backs just a little bit more. I like that uh, that strategy against Oakland. Now for um, against Detroit. Now for Detroit, um, be ready for a pumped up Raiders team. They're back at home, um, and this Raider team has a lot of juice. Gruden always has them ready to go. Uh, Oakland is, uh, you know, they're jammed. I think it's unfortunately for Oakland, uh, it's going to be the last season in Oakland, which is a bummer for the uh, the, the Oakland community there. Um, I think it's a bummer for the NFL too, to be honest with you. I just think the NFL is more fun when there's, you know, the Oakland Raiders, not the Las Vegas Raiders. But it is what it is. It's the reality we live in. Uh, but either way, Detroit's going to have to have to be ready for a wild crowd and a fast start from Oakland. Oakland's getting off on fast starts on most of these games, so they need to basically just kind of. <laughs> you know, stay on the field. Um, you know, Bevel, the offensive coordinator there, needs to dial up a nice game plan. They have the personnel. They have Stafford. Stay on the field. No three and outs for the first two to three possessions. Uh, force the Raiders into pass-only mode, so they need to really lock down Josh uh, Josh Jacobs and force um, uh, Derek Carr into basically third and long situations, uh, especially early in the game. Again, you need to get them off the field. Detroit, the defense isn't playing tough. And then you always get that weird field in Oakland, too, which is it's the only field in the league left that has the uh, the the baseball clay <laughs> it's 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 an issue you know it's a home field advantage for Oakland so anyway they need they need to basically get Jacobs off the field they need to force third and six third and seven those kinds of things for Derek Carr um you know take away some of those short um you know passing attempts to uh, Darren Waller or Foster Moreau uh, make them throw a little bit deeper to uh to Zay Jones or um or whoever they have uh Terrell Williams uh Davis whoever uh, attack the Raiders secondary with a healthy dose of Galladay and Jones. And I have both of these projected as nice projections for them. I think Galladay is going to have himself a very nice game. But to be fair, I said this about DeAndre Hopkins last week, and he had kind of a subpar game. Oakland stepped up to the plate defensively in a loss to Houston last week. Um, I don't... I, 
I just think that Detroit's going to be able to play um, and and get some deep passes. I like Galladay. I like this this Detroit attack. And you know, Oakland fans, to be fair, I mean, the, the defensive like the secondary hasn't been good. They they need to shore that up. And lastly, I think they need to involve Hawkinson on the goal line. Let's get more uh, touchdowns, less field goals. Um, Hawkinson hasn't been involved much. He's a very talented player. Stafford does look for him in the goal line. I think a couple weeks ago, Stafford threw those four touchdowns to Marvin Jones. That's not going to happen every week. I do think this is more of an outside receivers game, but I'd like to see Hawkinson uh, involved. And by the way, I also have Danny Amendola as a start. I think this kind of deeper, um, like seam routes, post routes, kind of the deeper middle of the field, test those safeties. I think that, um, you know, that's a recipe for success for Detroit moving forward. Okay, so last thing I have is, the, as promised, the fantasy football projections. And, uh, and I like this game offensively. You know, if you're a daily fantasy player, I would work in a couple of, you know, uh, of lineups. Um, if you don't play, let me say this. If you're a daily fantasy player and you play one lineup a week, you need to diversify more. So maybe even just play in the cheaper leagues and, and put out like five or ten lineups and you'll you'll start making more money. Uh, but Derek Carr at 20, that's a nice healthy start projection. Stafford at 29. Uh, Trey Carson, I know he's questionable. Uh, Jacobs is questionable. I think Richard's questionable. Williams might be questionable. Actually, I didn't even notice him on the injury report. and He played last week anyway. Anyway, so there you go. Uh, but you can see, I, I like Waller. I don't love Renfro this week to reproduce what he did last week. Um, Danny Mandola, I like all these receivers for Detroit. I like Hawkinson. Uh, defense and special teams, it's funny. I like the Lions a little bit more, but I actually like both of these teams to score high. Um, so that, to me, means the Lions are probably more likely to produce turnovers. Again, we saw that turnover margin earlier where uh, Oakland's averaging basically negative 0.4 turnovers a game uh, in terms of margin. Um, so, you know, Detroit, they're going to need to win that turnover margin, I think, to uh, to really neutralize this crowd, hopefully uh, more early than uh, than late for them, just to kind of quiet the crowd early. But there you go. That takes me for, uh, through the full projections for the Detroit-Oakland game. Please, you know, out there, if you're a Detroit fan or Oakland fan, I completely recognize that you're closer and more intelligent about your teams than I am. I do watch all these games. You know, I do research. Uh, you know, I, I chart these plays, you know, I, I put a lot of work into these things, but you know, if you think I'm missing the mark on something, please help me get better by commenting. And I'm, I'm happy to have a conversation, you know, the trolling stuff about telling me I suck and everything. I say these in a couple of videos. Um, and you feel free to put them in there. I'm just going to ignore them. And it's not really contributing to society or this channel at all. But if you want to put them in there, that's cool. <laughs> Why waste the time typing it? I don't know. Uh, but you know, if you want to put a, a productive, you know, give me some constructive criticism or anything like that, I'm all cool. So uh, let's do it. Let's grow this channel together. Let's build the community. Once again, like and subscribe, and we will we'll catch you on another episode soon. Thanks, everyone.